Back in the 90s, Nintendo built a remote-controlled cart as part of the initial development process for the original Super Mario Kart. Now in 2020, we have the opportunity to experience what that may have been like with Mario Kart Live Home Circuit. Mario Kart Live combines a toy Mario Kart with a game to create a truly unique mixed reality experience that has you control the toy cart to race around your home on a course of your own creation. The cart is a remarkable piece of technology that I can't help but be continually impressed with. When you pick up the retail kit, you get the cart, a charging cable, and a few cardboard signs we'll talk more about later, along with instructions on how to download the game. Initially, I thought paying $100 for what is essentially just a toy cart and some cardboard was insane. But then I played it. Your Mario or Luigi cart pairs with your Switch over a local Wi-Fi connection, meaning you can't connect to both your cart and the internet at the same time. Of course, this means online play isn't an option. If you want to play multiplayer, you'll need someone to own a cart of their own and come over to your house. Because of these limitations, I didn't get a chance to try multiplayer, but if we end up getting our hands on a second cart, we'll post some impressions. Once you're paired, you can see a direct video feed from your cart on your Switch or TV screen, and for me, that's where the fun began. Driving around my house in explore mode from the view of a minuscule toy at ground level is incredible. Before long, I was zooming around my living room, driving under my couch like it was a tunnel, or weaving between the legs of my dining room table. I chased my dog and followed my cat. I watched my kids run by and crept through the kitchen. I wasn't even properly playing the game at this point, yet it filled me with a sense of wonder to see this little cart zipping around my house seemingly without boundaries. More impressive still, controlling this physical remote-controlled cart feels like a Mario Kart game on the Switch. The turning radius and speed feel just close enough to the games that I never felt like I was playing something unfamiliar. When I finally set up a course and started racing, I would occasionally forget I was playing with a physical device at all. The course setup, however, serves as a reminder that this isn't the Mario Kart you know and love. It isn't an overly complicated or cumbersome process, but it does become tedious over time, especially when you consider that this is the only way to race on a track as the game doesn't have any built-in courses for you to play. To set up a new course, you have to place four gates in a loop around your play area. Once you do that, Lakitu will show up and dump some paint on your tires, then you'll drive your cart through each gate to establish the track shape. I love that so much personality was added to what would otherwise be a mundane task. Once your course is created, you can also customize each gate, turning it into a traditional checkpoint full of item boxes, a boost pad that speeds your cart up, or even a magnet to pull your cart along the course to name a few. You can't make courses like Mount Wario that don't actually loop, but aside from that, the restrictions placed on course creation are few. I had my partner set up a complex course lined with household items like cups and small cones, then littered boxes around the roadway to make it more challenging, and to my surprise, the game had no issue with any of it. I was able to plow through boxes and drift around cones without skipping a beat. You'll want to have a fairly wide space to set this up in, too. If the camera on top of your cart doesn't catch the number on your gate, it won't count your lap. I set up a small course that ended in a hairpin turn, and if I didn't hit that turn just right, it wouldn't register that I had crossed the finish line, resulting in frustrating losses as I had to complete nine laps on a five lap course because I could barely manage to hit the finish line at the correct angle. The space requirement only grows larger as you make your way up the ranks to 200cc. The faster your cart can travel, the more room you'll need. Gates are Mario Kart Live's weakest link. Aside from the occasional inability to register due to my admittedly poor course design decisions, they cannot be repositioned during a race. Moving them from their original positions mid-race can wreak havoc on your game. The game reminds you often to weigh them down to avoid movement in case you do run into them, but it's hard to believe how badly races glitch out when you do. Laps become increasingly difficult to complete, Koopalings start appearing in random places throughout the play area, and the game generally descends into chaos. Glitches and rule breaking aside, Mario Kart Live is extremely fun to play. There's something satisfying about hopping into explore mode and just driving around, and it would appear the developers knew this as well, because after every race you complete, rather than jumping right into the next race, you're dropped into explore mode in which you can enjoy the sights and sounds of a track environment without the stress of racing. But with a good course design, racing is equally fun. In a few instances, I had my partner set up a few tracks so I could go in blind, and it was the most fun I had at any point with this game. Racing a well-designed course without prior knowledge is incredibly exciting and something I couldn't get enough of. When you're racing on a track you didn't have to build, Mario Kart Live can come dangerously close to feeling like a proper Mario Kart game. Under the right circumstances, Mario Kart Live feels strikingly similar to Mario Kart 8. 
As I mentioned before, the cart handles in a way that isn't all that unfamiliar. You can still hop in game though the cart itself cannot, and you can drift to boost though the cart just kind of turns a bit more slowly around the curve rather than actually drifting. I've only played Mario Kart Live for the last week or so, but I don't think there's a deep well of techniques to be found here. If you're a top tier Mario Kart competitor looking for your next great challenge, you should probably continue to stick to your Mario Kart game of choice. Live is a strictly casual experience and certainly not built for real competition. I never found any difficulty in beating my opponents as the AI controlled Koopalings aren't exactly the greatest racers, but I can't help but wonder if I'd find a challenge against a skilled Mario Kart 8 player. You can also pick up a ton of familiar items, like a bullet bill which will still transform you and guide your cart along the course. You can get a chain chomp that will pull you along while attacking foes, and a power star to give you improved speed and handling, even at 200cc, just to name a few. In these moments, Mario Kart Live shines its brightest. That doesn't mean, however, that the news is all good. You have a static set of opponents in Mario Kart Live in the Koopalings. The Koopalings are AI controlled, and since they exist only virtually, they can't collide with objects you place on your course. The reason the game doesn't break when you place items like boxes on your track is that it doesn't know they're there. That means when a Koopaling runs into one of these boxes, they just pass through it as though the course is unobstructed. I would have loved for Nintendo to provide us with printable images of some kind to put on physical objects so the game would know what we put on the road and allow my opponents to interact with them the same way Mario does. It's a minor gripe, but for a game that manages to create such an immersive environment, it can be a little distracting to be taken out of it by watching other racers clip through. Once your course is set up, you can choose to play in Grand Prix, time trial, or single race modes. Each Grand Prix in Mario Kart Live is just three races instead of the traditional four, and tracks obviously can't change between races without the player physically moving the gates, but the way in which obstacles and enemies appear around the course seemingly at random, along with the stark shifts in tone between environments, gives me hopes that we'll see similar systems in the next mainline Mario Kart. It's impossible to create the kind of gravity-defying, mind-bending variety seen in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe thanks to Mario Kart Live having to play with real-world physics, but the team at Velen Studios has put together a remarkable range of environments. When you play a race in Mario Kart Live, you can have your gates set up however you like, meaning the courses you choose to run are a set of visual environmental effects designed to make you feel like the room you're in has been transported to another world. My favorite among these is the World 1-1 filter, which spawns 8-bit question blocks, coins, and even Goombas all over the track. Even at 50cc, the number of visual effects popping up on screen can be overwhelming, especially in handheld mode. When paired with higher speeds, things get even more chaotic, and I mean that in a very complex complementary way. There's a total of 25 environments available in Mario Kart Live, most of which I haven't yet unlocked as of this writing. Of those I've seen, they vary from cute novelties with little impact on gameplay to those that make racing far more challenging or interesting. One of my favorites involves a Magic Koopa randomly flying across the screen, inverting both your controls and the image displayed from your kart's camera. Another environment spawns tornadoes all over the track, causing your cart to careen off the road. Yet another throws boos all over the track, and if you hit one of the boos, it possesses your screen briefly, making it harder for you to see. These environments add some much needed variety to your races, especially if, like me, you aren't building a new course between each race. That being said, they don't make up for the lack of variety in course design when compared to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Environments are a bit of a mixed bag for me. Although you'll encounter them all by racing through the GPs, you can also unlock them for use on your own individual races, but in my opinion, their use is pretty limited. You can apply an environment to explore mode, but none of the fun elements like unique enemies or environmental hazards will spawn in explore mode, meaning all you're essentially left with is a camera filter. More importantly, races already allow you to use environments you haven't yet unlocked, meaning I felt no real incentive to keep playing in order to get these. Since I could always start up a race to get the most out of those environments, whether I had already unlocked them or not. The reason for environments to exist, however, is obvious. Setting up a course for each race can quickly become tiresome, but differing environments allow the same track to feel fresh, such as turning one from a rain-covered raceway into Rainbow Road. When I first started playing, I tried setting up a new track each time another race would come up, but it's hard to both constantly dream up new course ideas as well as set them up. Just like traditional Mario Kart, you can play from 50cc all the way up to 200 
100cc. At 50cc, the game appears to depict Mario traveling at a decent speed, when in reality, the physical toy is inching slowly along the track. At 200cc, the cart is positively flying, both on screen and in the real world. I had to make my tracks much larger once I unlocked the game's top speed, as I was launching an incredible distance from the boost I'd get at the beginning of each race. You can unlock more than just different speeds, however. Every coin you collect during a race counts toward unlocking new costumes, carts, and horns for Mario to use during his races. I absolutely love being able to customize Mario in this way, and of all the new ideas introduced in Mario Kart Live, I hope costumes make it into the inevitable Mario Kart 9 the most. Some might feel limited in their inability to only play as Mario or Luigi, but I've never strayed too far from the main man himself, save for using Link or an Animal Crossing villager in Mario Kart 8. But I was never expecting there to be much variety in the Mario Kart Live toy line considering their high price tag. Everything about Mario's model in Mario Kart Live is a joy to behold. Mario's model is detailed and his animations are out of this world good. When you boost your cart, Mario will hold onto his hat to prevent it from flying off. When you throw your cart into reverse, Mario will look behind him to make sure he doesn't bump into something. And when you start the game for the first time, Mario will knock on the screen to let you know he's ready to go. At times, I feel like I'm looking at a testing ground for ideas for a next-gen Mario game, and I've gotta say, I like what I see. The cart really is the star of the show. I mean, this thing is sturdy. I lost count of the number of times I ran into something that I could have sworn would damage the cart, but it still looks as good as it did the day I received it. When I first previewed Mario Kart Live, I was told the cart could travel up to 30 feet away from my Switch, and in my estimation, that seems to be the case. I was able to consistently drive at least 30 feet away while maintaining a stable connection. I'm able to race between my living room and dining room without issues. Battery life is also fairly impressive for this toy as well. Nintendo quotes you can get around an hour and a half of continuous play at 150cc, and my testing falls in line with that number. 50cc on the other hand got me around 3 hours of playtime, and 200cc topped out at 1 hour. The cart takes about 3 hours to fully charge. I was really impressed with the cart's battery life, considering its speed and size. As a unique offering in Nintendo's lineup, I wondered if it would be a good fit for a different audience. My kids have been curious about Mario Kart Live since it was first announced, and Nintendo says the game is designed for ages 6 and up. With that in mind, I showed it to my 5-year-old son and my 7-year-old daughter. Both of them are completely in love with the game and can't wait for this review to be over so they can steal it from me, though my daughter wishes she could get a Peach Kart instead of Mario. It's clear to me that Velen Studios has a lot of love for Mario and the Mario Kart series. From the way Mario himself was handled, to the songs you can listen to on the in-game radio, to the clever environment design and callbacks to the series' history, but the limitations imposed by playing Mario Kart Live in the real world hold it back from satisfying my desire for a new mainline Mario Kart game. That doesn't mean Mario Kart Live isn't worth your time. Far from it. If the technology powering this new take on one of Nintendo's most beloved franchises piques your interest, you'll love Mario Kart Live. But if you're looking for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's successor, you may want to keep waiting. This isn't the type of game you should binge or play marathon sessions on, but something to keep around for whenever you feel like playing something a little different. I like Mario Kart Live Home Circuit a lot. Despite feeling tedium set in while redesigning courses, the idea that my house has been transformed into a Mario Kart circuit still feels kind of magical. I very nearly rated this game lower, but the oh wow moment of seeing the cart come to life on the screen is incredible for me, even after having seen it many times over. Sure, it's more casual than your usual Mario Kart, and sure, the environments don't make a ton of sense outside of races, but for me as a tech enthusiast, I can't help but be thoroughly impressed by the ingenuity on display and having a lot of fun along the way. Maybe Nintendo was right about their initial Mario Kart idea, after all. That wraps up our review of Mario Kart Live Home Circuit for the Nintendo Switch. As always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to Game Explain for much more on Mario Kart Live Home Circuit and all other things gaming as well. Ring that notification bell to be the first to know every time a new video goes up, and I will see you next time.